Oh, there was one last question I remember, and it was um, about uh, the 25th anniversary, or 25th birthday of C60. Um, and uh, it's an interesting one because, um, in fact, um, in 19, Easter 1984, I was visiting uh, Bob Curl at Rice University, and he suggested I go and see Rick Smalley, who'd done some brilliant work um, in developing cluster beam technique, a method for detecting um, clusters of refractory materials, materials that didn't weren't volatile. And so I went over, and whilst uh, Rick was telling me uh, how things, what he was doing, he is a brilliant character. Um, I thought, well, maybe it can explain these carbon chain molecules that we detected some years beforehand. And um, that was 1984. Now, um, a few months later, in June, July, a paper came out from the Exxon lab that had done the experiment that I'd suggested, and they had detected um, Oh, carbon clusters way above 30. I mean, I, I actually knew of some early work by Hintenberger that had seen clusters of carbon up to 33 or so, and I conjectured that these were linear chains, which they and probably most of them were, maybe monocyclic rings. Um, anyway, to cut a long story short, uh, around July 1984, uh, my colleague Tony Stace gave me this interesting paper from the Exxon lab where they'd seen clusters up to 100 and 120. And I looked at this, wow, this is interesting. And in fact, uh, these were numbered and 40, 50, 60 was a bit stronger than others and 70. In fact, uh, there was a, a signal at C60 there. Um, a little bit later, another group at, um, at Bell Labs uh, looked at the same system and picked off C60 and um, and uh, they photofragmented it because it was you know stronger than other things and not but they didn't seem to have asked the question of what it might be so um, not only that uh, after we um, okay well let's go on because I'll come back to this point um, about a year and a half later I got a phone call from Bob Curl that was I interested in coming to Rice University to do this experiment because I'd, I'd suggested this experiment to Bob really and he'd written to me letters and we have letters to him for about the complexity of the second part of the problem but anyway so we're going to at least do us to get a start on it and so I I said you know are you coming or should we send you the data no here's a little thing. lesson you go and do your own experiment because if something special exciting turns up and it's not what you predicted you won't be involved, you'll only be involved in the bit that you predicted. Anyway, to cut the long story, I went, and of course we discovered C60. Now, during these experiments, um, the, we saw all these signals, but on the 4th of September, um, I wrote on my printout um, C60 question mark, C60 huge and C70 as well, and one of the students, Hugh Ann, had also wrote on the 4th of September the same thing, that C60 is very strong indeed and so although C60 had been seen before I think it was the 4th of September on which we realized that it was a little bit special and this is something exceptional um, and in fact you could say that um, its birthday or its conception was uh, in 1970 when uh, A.G. Ossower had the brilliant idea that perhaps the C60 molecule could form and be stable and he published that in Japanese uh, and also in a book later with his um, professor Yoshida and uh, so you could say the the year of conception was 1970 and it took five years to to be born. Um, also as a paper by um, um, David Jones, who wrote on the pseudonym of Daedalus, who predicted that uh, a graphite sheet would curve into a ball if you had 12 pentagons. So he, I think, takes the credit 
for the first um, carbon cage, although I think there was a paper who, of someone who suggested that C60, H60 might form, uh, was about the same time. But I think uh, those are the main ones on pure carbon. Um, and so, uh, about a year and a half ago, I met uh, a lady from Google, uh, Laurie Park, and I sort of mentioned, well, you have these nice Google anniversaries where you commemorate things, and how about um, commemorating the birthday of C60 on the 4th of September, um, 1985, it'll be the 25th anniversary in 2010, and she said, well, she passed it on, and the people at Google uh, came back to me a few months ago and said, well, we're interested in this, um, and uh, they put together a special Google Doodle uh, on the 4th of September, um, and uh, I think it, it was very nice because it was interactive, and they told me that they solved quite a few, had to solve quite a few problems to make it come down very quickly. And uh, perhaps more people um, learned about C60 in one day of Google um, than in 25 years of research and papers and magazine uh, articles about it. <laughs> Wouldn't it be interesting? I, um, my colleague uh, Andreas Mershon is looking into it. He, he thought it might well be uh, the biggest uh, publicity um, exercise that C60 had ever had. So it was great uh, that there was a Google Doodle and I'm sure that lots of kids around the world enjoyed a little bit of playing, interactive playing with the Doodle and probably learned something about not only C60 as a soccer ball but also maybe learned something about the chemistry and Buckminster Fuller's domes and had a little bit of fun as well. It was great.